I think probably the biggest concern that people have when they start a career in direct sales, network marketing, is that they don't want people, especially friends and family, to start thinking of them as being spammy or to be pushy, to be pressuring them to do something they don't want to do. Nobody wants to be that person. And yet we all have that image of a salesperson being very aggressive, uh, being um, almost like if, if we aren't that person that we're not going to succeed. So there is sort of a disconnect. I don't want to be that person, but I want to succeed in sales. So how do I do this? That's what we're going to talk about today. And it's really, really important that we do. I'm Michelle Fox, founder of Boss Babes Online. I'm doing a series on basic sales skills. Last week, we talked about your ideal customer avatar. Yes, you do have an ideal customer. And this week sort of um, continues that thought. But before we um, talk about this topic, I want to tell you a story. <laughs> uh, I've mentioned many times that I have experienced direct sales at every level in the sense of I've done it part-time, full-time, as a hobby, as a career. I've done it online. I've done it in person. Uh, when my kids were late elementary, middle school, high school years, I chose to really pull away from my direct sales business and focus on you know taking them here, there, everywhere. I had already established quite a base of customers. And so I was basically servicing reorders. So I still had money coming in. I still thought of myself as a consultant, as a business person, but I wasn't booking parties and I really was not going out of my way to acquire new customers. I was totally focused on the needs of my family. During that time, I noticed a shift in how I talked to people about my products. It was actually easier for me to have conversations with people, specifically strangers, about my products. And this is what was happening. I didn't so much feel like a consultant in terms of booking, selling, team building. I felt more like a consumer, a friend, a colleague, because I am a lover of the product. So if I was, let's say, at a dinner party and someone was mentioning a, a problem that they had, a concern, and I knew that a product that I use can address that concern, something it was a concern that I used to have, but it was resolved by this product, it was very natural for me to say, I know exactly what you're talking about. I had that same issue. I tried this, this, and this, never worked. Then I tried this and it, I swear to you, it worked. I've been using it for this long. These are the results that I've experienced. I love it. I tell everybody about it. And as I'm doing that, I didn't feel the anxiety that I may have felt when I was in consultant role because either she was, was receptive to it or she wasn't, but I wasn't trying to make a sale. I was, I was sharing from my heart. I was trying to be a friend. I was trying to help solve a problem. That was a big difference. And whether she, uh, if she was interested, you know, you can kind of tell, you know, read the room, <laughs> you know, she would be like, oh, really? You know, well, well, how did you get it? How much was it? What would I need to do to get it? What brand is it? You know, these kinds of questions, you know, kind of like coming closer. Or she'd be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm okay. I've, I've already got an idea. Somebody else, I've already talked to somebody else about it. And either way, whichever way it went, I could respond in kind, but it didn't hurt my feelings because I was just, like I said, putting it out there as a helpful acquaintance and someone that had knowledge in that area and experience in that area. I was speaking out of integrity and either she was receptive to it or not. But I knew that what I had to say was relevant to her. I wasn't just talking to the whole table about it. I was talking to her. Okay. So I 
did make some new sales and I did get some new customers and I actually had people ask me for parties and I would say, nah, I don't do that. <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> but uh, it was really kind of easy. Like it was easier than when I was in full on consultant mode and years passed and it was time for me to go back to working my business like a business. And I had sort of a sit down with myself and thought, all right, so I've been enjoying this time where I have felt very casual and comfortable talking to people. Uh, does that need to change? And I, I didn't want it to change. So I had kind of the revelation that if we are talking to people that actually have a need that our product product addresses, and if we're speaking out of wanting to help meet that need, it puts a whole new spin on things. Like you can't be spammy in that situation. If, if I need something and I am making that clear to everyone and someone says, I can, I can help you with that. How could that be spammy? So it really helped me step back into my role as a consultant with a whole new, a whole, a fresh perspective. And coincidentally, at that time, I started doing more online. And uh, as I was learning about social media marketing, there's such a thing as attraction marketing. And that is exactly what attraction marketing teaches you is that there is such a thing as an ideal customer, a niche audience, a niche market, and that they have certain pain points, things that they need or desire, and that your product or service has a way of fulfilling those needs and desires. And when those things connect, it's just, it's very simple. It's very natural and organic. So the question is identifying. Who is your audience and what does your product or service offer them? It was so liberating and it just made things feel so natural and simple. Selling is never as easy <laughs> as some people make, you know, that want to make it sound. It is always a challenge because whenever you open up yourself and you are you, it, it, there's that possibility of someone saying, I'm just not interested. There's that possibility of rejection. Rejection always hurts. But when you know that you are speaking out of a desire to help, out of a desire, like I have experience and knowledge, I'm offering a solution to your situation, to your problem, to your concern, and they say, no, thank you, then it, it does, it takes the sting away. It really does. So what I'm here to say is, okay, story's over. Now I'm, now I'm training. <laughs> so what I was here to say is that we tend to think of selling as looking at the whole wide world and just taking any random person and trying to convince them to give us a chance to basically talk them into buying our product. That is what most of us think of selling as. When in reality, selling is meeting a need. So if we, instead of are trying to market or try to talk to everyone, if instead we start pondering who our market actually is, who our ideal customer is, refer to last week's video, if we really identify who that is, and we figure out where that type of person hangs out, both online and in person, how we can showcase what our product offers to that person. You know, we're starting to put the pieces together. All right. All right. So let me start to flesh this out. So if I sell wart remover, I'm not going to sell it to someone who's never had warts. It doesn't matter if it is the best wart remover on the planet. It doesn't matter if it's buy two, get five free. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like there are a lot of situations where the ingredients, how powerful it is, the great price point, 
irrelevant. <laughs> you have to find the person that needs what your product offers. So in addition to understanding the, the person, you need to understand your product. And frequently we have this vague understanding of what our product does or, you know, the need that it meets, but have we really drilled down on it? So take some time to think about, and I know most of us sell more than one product. What is your, your star seller? What is the thing or the set or the, the introductory product? What is the one that you talk about most often that is featured in most of the marketing or that is really kind of the big one when you do a, a, a presentation or a party? You know, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. You kind of have a sense of, oh yeah, well, that would be, it would be this. Who is that marketed toward? <clears throat> so think of, you know, that person's age, sex, you know, our uh, education level, where do they live, city or, or more rural? You know, you can think of all these different things. And what is it, you know, that is either a desire in their life or a, a, something that is lacking in their life? What is the problem that you're trying to help them with? What is the, the goal or the desire that you're helping them achieve? What are you helping them attain, change, do, accomplish? You see what I'm saying? Like your product does something, even if it's just, it helps them. Like if it's art, for example, it just fulfills uh, their desire for, for beauty. It, it, it fills an aesthetic desire to, to um, you know, to, you know, whatever, to beautify their landscape. Whatever it is, you need to identify what your product is offering and who it appeals to, who is going to be attracted to that, who is looking for that, whether they realize it or not. You know, sometimes people have a need and they don't realize it. So those are the two key things. Who's your audience and how does your product serve that audience? I promise you this, <clears throat> that as you understand that, and you find ways to figure out where that audience is and you find ways to naturally show them how your product can can resolve those issues or or you know so you know however the selling is so natural okay i don't like to say easy because it is it is a job it is you know you have to work consistently and you have to uh, persist and you have to usually connect with them more than once. So there's, there's definitely work involved, but it is vastly, <laughs> vastly more pleasant than that feeling of badgering and pressuring and cold calling or reminding or begging even that can just be a thing of the past when you understand your ideal audience and what it is that your product or service offers them. Are you feeling the difference? So as far as the question of how can I sell without being spammy, the answer lies in your, your understanding of what it is to sell. And my answer to you is that when you see selling as meeting a need, fulfilling a desire, answering a question, and that you understand who the audience is that that needs that it will it will just solve so many issues spammy pushy annoying out the door okay people will come to you when you show up as a helpful expert someone who is sincere someone who is there as um, a, a counselor an advocate an advisor people will will be drawn to you and the more that you are able to solve people's problems the more they will refer other people to you and then it's not so much where you're going out trying to find customers they will they will be drawn to you and you'll have referrals and it'll go on and on it's a whole different way of doing things so i hope that this is kind of getting you excited because 
it really changed my business and the way I think and the way I do things. So this is just, this is just video two in a five video series. <laughs> so get excited. Come back next week for more. Um, I do have a freebie. I said that every week we'd have a new video and a new freebie. And this week, uh, I'm super, super excited about this. I have updated this. So if you've seen it before, no, you haven't. Uh, it's a hundred easy ways to get customers and sales, even if you're an introvert. When I was brand new, I was given a sheet and it just had in tiny, tiny print, like a hundred different ideas in little boxes. And I took a highlighter and I, I highlighted the ones that I felt like I could do. And it was things like, you know, leave a catalog at your dentist's office, that kind of stuff. And so I took that idea and I kind of fleshed it out and I'm really excited about it. So wanted more customers and sales. Oh, so it starts out nice and easy. So these ideas do not require talking to strangers. So these are some ideas, some ways that you can make a connection with the right people so that you have that opportunity to talk about how your products and services can fill the need. Okay. The next one is um, how to reach out to people you already know. Then we go into how you can talk to people that, okay, maybe they, you might want to say strangers, <laughs> but we're going to make a connection first. Okay. Somebody that you know peripherally, like the cashier that always checks you out, that kind of person. And then the final suggestions are some of my specialties, things that I'm kind of known for if you've been following me at all. So uh, there's a hundred suggestions in all, and I think that you're really, really going to enjoy it. Um, so this is a free resource for you to download and have forever. I, I can't wait to get your feedback because I, I think this is my favorite. Um, so last week, there was a workbook for you to download. This week is a hundred ways to get customers and sales. I hope you are enjoying these. Uh, don't forget to like and um, subscribe to this channel like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you know anybody else that could uh, benefit from the video, send it their way. Um, I just want as many people as possible to know about this series. I'm just really passionate about it. And I can't wait to see you next week. Thanks so much for watching.